What's good everyone, OJ here, welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be talking about the best and biggest Nintendo Switch games in 2023, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. And we're starting off with an honorable mention slash maybe, and that is Hollow Knight Silk Song. This game has been supposed to be coming out for like the past two to three years, so who knows if it'll actually launch, but I'm guessing that it will, but... You never know, but whenever it does launch, it should be one of the best titles just because Hollow Knight, the original, was absolutely incredible on the Nintendo Switch. So I'm expecting big things out of Hollow Knight Silk Song. It looks incredible from all the gameplay that we've seen, and it looked almost done pretty much like a couple of years ago when Nintendo showed it off at E3. So we'll see how it actually turns out when it launches, hopefully in 2023. Next up is Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden. These are two of the best turn-based RPGs ever in my opinion and what makes them so unique and special is what they do around the superbly tight and nicely crafted RPG mechanics. You have the social links, you have the incredible story, you have the great dialogue. There's so many things that really comprise that makes Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden absolutely incredible, especially with Persona 4 Golden. But you're going to love the combat in this game. I think that's what really keeps you going is how good and in-depth the combat is, along with the incredible music as well, because you got to have great music in an RPG, especially long RPGs like Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden. So you really can't go wrong if you're looking for superbly crafted portable style RPGs. Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden are your games in 2023. Next up is SpongeBob SquarePants, The Cosmic Shake. And this is a game that I haven't really researched too much, but it's the SpongeBob franchise. And apparently this one's gonna be solid based off of what we've seen so far and what the last SpongeBob game did too. It was a respectable game, especially for licensed titles for stuff like this. Now this is THQ Nordic with this one. And essentially what you're gonna have in this game is more than 30 fantastic costumes like Snail Bob and SpongeGar. You can travel to seven distinct wish worlds like the Wild West, Jellyfish Fields, and Halloween Rock, and you can experience all the buddy movie banter with SpongeBob's permanent companion, Balloon Patrick, where you can meet all your favorite bikini bottoms from the series, like the original voice actors. You can enjoy the in-game soundtrack featuring 101 songs from the series, including Sweet Victory. So what I like about this is that it's been authentic to the show. I was a huge SpongeBob fan and I'll occasionally watch it every now and then, certain clips and stuff like that. It's been memed to death on Twitter and everything. And I use the memes every now and then. So I do enjoy SpongeBob. So hopefully this game is going to be pretty good. It looks like it's going to be solid. It looks like they're actually taking their time with the game. Comes out late January. So it should be a solid SpongeBob title for fans out there. Next up is Tales of Symphonia Remastered from Bandai Namco. And I'm looking forward to this for one and one reason only collectors baby no i'm looking forward to it for more than that it's actually my favorite tales game along with tales of vesperia tales of arise those are kind of my favorite ones this one was my original favorite tales game back when it came out on the gamecube and it's unfortunate that it doesn't have the 60 frames per second the gamecube version has because i guess it's based on the ps3 or the 30 frames per second ps2 version or whatever the case is either way tales of symphonia is still a great game with a great story Fairly good music, great characters, good world building, and just fantastic gameplay at the end of the day. You're going to have a lot of fun playing the game. It's just a blast to go through. So Tales of Symphonia, not only a collector's item for physical, at least on the Nintendo Switch, but also a very good game coming out early 2023. Moving on to Digimon. Next up is Atelier Ryza 3, Alchemist of the End, and The Secret Key from Koei Tecmo. And Atelier Ryza has been, I think, one of the saving graces for the Atelier series i think that a lot of people saw atelier just as like okay a second rate or third rate type of rpg but i think that atelier ryza actually rose this franchise up or at least this sub franchise of the atelier franchise it rose it up to more prominence and a higher quality when it comes to scores and also when it comes to sales the atelier ryza games have been selling better than all the other atelier games so i think that this game is really going to cap off everything they wanted to put in the game you have a nice huge open-ended areas you've got cool traversal mechanics and the combat just looks bonkers with what they're doing so i'm loving what i'm seeing from atelier ryza looks like they've improved pretty much every aspect of the alchemy in addition to the combat in the game the music seems really good which the music is underrated in the atelier series especially atelier ryza so i'm looking forward to it i think it's going to be a very good game and a nice send-off because apparently this is the last atelier ryza game so a nice send-off for Ryza and her crew. Next up is Octopath Traveler 2 from Square Enix, and I'm very excited for this game. This 
might be, when it's all said and done, one of the highest rated games of 2023 based off of what we know so far. A lot of the issues from the original Octopath Traveler as in not having the intertwining stories and some of the other little things have been addressed in Octopath Traveler 2 with intertwining stories and also with tighter mechanics with more abilities to use at different times as well and hopefully fixing, which I think that they did, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, fixing the whole issue with having people in your sub to where you would be able to switch them out more freely and get more experience so i think that's going to be good too so there's a lot of things that octopath traveler 2 is going to do that improves upon the formula of the original all the way back in 2018 and it looks like it's just going to take the hd 2d engine unreal engine form what they're doing with the hd 2d style to the next level because it looks incredible which is saying something because live alive looked incredible and this kind of low-key blows live alive out of the water with the effects and what they're doing with HD 2D. So I'm very much looking forward to Octopath Traveler 2, all of the great combat and the effects and the leveling and the upgrading system, everything's been boosted up. So I think that Octopath Traveler 2 could easily be one of the best games of 2023 and be a nomination for many people's game of the year and of course rpg of the year next up is kirby's return to dreamland deluxe from nintendo how laboratory so it's the same kirby game that we got back in the day return to dreamland on the nintendo wii but remastered where it looks a lot better than what it was originally now the big downer with this game is that there's not online co-op that's the whole point of this game is to be able to use different kirby characters and beat the crap out of stuff in 2d action and it's more of a family style game with this because it's only local and there's no online that's the only downside but if you can get past that or if you have friends to play with or family to play with right at home this is one of the best 2D action games from the Wii. So I think it's going to be a solid adventure for families to enjoy. Just kind of like how Kirby and the Forgotten Land was for the little co-op mode. But the co-op in this game is way better than Kirby and the Forgotten Land. So I think it's going to be a treat for fans in February of 2023. Next up is Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. And this is one of those classic games that should have came out a while ago. But Fatal Frame is so niche at times and there's issues. But it's easily one of the best Fatal frame games out there with a very unique mechanic when it comes to the poltergeist camera that you have and being able to get the best pictures and take the best points and kind of rack up your score and go through and find out what's happening on this island and in this area and i think that fatal frame is one of those games that absolutely people should support if you want to see more of them because we don't get a lot of new fatal frame games and it always takes a while there's always some issues with localization or some things here and there this is our chance across all platforms not just nintendo switch to really just go out there and show that we do want fatal frame more so fatal frame mask of the lunar clips coming out early march and it should be a game that garners a lot of good scores and attention from the media so look out for that one next up is bayonetta origins Ceresa and the lost demon now at first i was a little bit bullish on this game when i saw it because i wasn't used to a smaller scale bayonetta game it just was announced at the game awards and caught everybody off guard but after i covered it recently in a video i started seeing some more stuff i started analyzing the trailer a little bit more and looking and it looks like this is going to be a really cool tag team type of adventure game that's going to be a lot more combat packed than they showed on based off of some of the clips from the trailer i went back and looked at it they didn't show a lot of the combat but it does seem like it's going to be quite a bit fun to get through and hideki kamiya talked about it as well saying that this is from some of their younger staff and they have a lot of cool and new and unique ideas they're going to be putting into this game when it comes to the design and the puzzles and also the combat as well with cheshire and bayonetta's magic so i'm actually looking forward to seeing what they do with this game more and more as i analyzed the trailer and went over what hideki kamiya had to say and it's not going to be too much longer here till we get Bayonetta Origins, Ceresa and the Lost Demon. It's coming out mid-March, and I think that it's going to be better than at least what people thought it could be when they first saw the trailer at the Game Awards in 2022. Next up, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. You got Volume 1 and Volume 2, and it's Volume Awesome for many people out there because Mega Man fans have been waiting for this Battle Network Collection for quite some time now, and it's coming in mid-April. So I'm looking forward to this as well because I'm looking forward for collecting, yes, because this is the old school Mega Man Battle Network games 
with online multiplayer and also quality of life features and also little extras and different things. And you're gonna be able to battle with your friends and trade with them in all these different games. It's just an incredible value for what you're getting here. And something that has taken so long at this point, I have to support Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. And what they're doing with this game is not just a simple re-release. They really tuned things up and actually added in that extra online multiplayer that really makes this click and really makes this collection worth it for many people out there there's trading there's all sorts of stuff that they're going to be doing so i think that that's what really makes this vault up so many people's lists out there even if you're not into mega man battle network maybe you want to try to get into it with that new functionality and features it could be your new favorite game out there if you miss them back on the ds and the gba and all that so i think this is going to be a great experience for many mega man battle network fans out there and i'm super happy it's coming out this april next up rune factory 3 3 special coming out spring from marvelous and it's a remaster of a fan favorite rune factory and it's always awesome to have more rune factory out there especially when they're going to be touching things up and kind of putting this game out there for fans who missed it before so if you're into rune factory you like that rpg and farming sim type of gameplay rune factory 3 special is going to be there for you spring 2023 next up master detective archives rain code and this one i'm super excited for because this takes what the danganronpa games do with the crazy narrative and all the different stuff but actually put it into something that i would want to play because that's more of like a visual novel style of thing but this is more of an actual adventure detective style of game where you explore in full 3d and get clues and fight and do different things but some of the gameplay that i've seen in this game just looks crazy what they're trying to do looks very innovative which danganronpa from a narrative standpoint is extremely innovative but now they're taking all their experience with that and putting it into a full 3d action adventure detective mystery style game so i think that rain code is going to be one of those games that maybe it's not everyone's cup of tea but for those who actually try it out and play it it's going to be one of the better games of 2023 next up final fantasy pixel remaster spring 2023 from square enix and i'm excited for this because i'm excited as a collector i think that's really what it comes down to but even beside the whole collector angle you get final fantasy one through six six of the best old school rpgs out there all on one cartridge if you're able to get it physical or you can just buy it download it whatever the case is right so there's going to be quite a bit of talk and conversation about the price and everything but when it comes down to it these are some of the best old school rpgs out there me particularly final fantasy 6 or 3 as it was here in america on cartridge is one of the finest rpgs that i've ever played and some of the older final fantasy games like 3 the actual 3 4 5 those are really underrated because 6 is just so monumental when it comes to the upgrades and the story and the memorability and what it does so i think that fans for the first time are going to be able to experience these in such a way that's going to really really highlight exactly how advanced and cool that these final fantasy games were back when they first came out so i'm happy for that price issues aside next up hogwarts legacy from warner bros and people are wondering whether this game is even going to be able to be solid on the nintendo switch or not and i'm not really sure because i don't know who's developing the port of the game avalanche is on i think the xbox series and ps5 versions there's also going to be the switch version and other versions so we just don't know exactly how it's going to work out with everything but it's still going to be a big game and if they're able to get it as good of quality as let's say near automata the end of your edition i think that it's going to be a solid rpg out there for harry potter fans and also if you look at it this game has some crazy things that it's doing with the gameplay like you can just get on the broom and just fly anywhere i mean they have all sorts of magic systems and rpg mechanics and leveling this is not a cash grab by any means this is a full in-depth open world or open-ended style 
action RPG that would make a lot of new RPGs look bad in comparison. So I think that Hogwarts Legacy is a game that you have to keep your eye on, especially that Nintendo Switch version. If you get some portable Hogwarts Harry Potter action, that's going to be good. I'm just hoping that everything else can hold up with the Switch version of the game. And if not, there's other versions for you to play as well. Next up, Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life, which a lot of people are looking forward to, especially if you're in to the farming simulator thing. People talked about Nintendo doing too much farming simulators out there. Story of Seasons is one of those really good ones that fans loved. I mean, these games have just been around forever. Not necessarily my cup of tea, but it's still something to play out there and it's still a big name in the gaming industry, especially when you're talking about people who do the cozy games and the sweet and cuddly games and everything. Story of Seasons has been one of those titles they are looking forward to and maybe it'll be something that you would want to play as well, especially with all the cool upgrades and updates and features they're adding into Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life. So that's coming summer 2023. Next up is a game that was recently announced at the time that I'm recording this video, which kind of surprised people and that is Risk of Rain returns in 2023 from gearbox publishing it's coming to the switch and pc before other platforms which i did not expect and i played risk of rain 2 and i have the original game as well and it's a really cool rogue type game not quite as good as hades and i don't have hades 2 on this list because it hasn't been completely confirmed for the nintendo switch for 2023 just pc beta or whatever the case that they're doing early access but risk of rain i think is still a very good game and risk of rain returns with its new online multiplayer mode one through four players online going out there and fighting together i think that it could really make for some memorable moments out there for people who love the rogue style of game and love the different types of weaponry that you can get in the Risk of Rain franchise. So Risk of Rain Returns, surprise announced for the Nintendo Switch and should be good when it drops sometime in 2023. Next up is The Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie. And I'm terribly sorry for butchering the name before on previous videos, but I am a new fan of The Legend of Heroes. And this game, this new one is looking absolutely incredible from what they're showing off. I love the triple protagonist angle that they're going with, and the combat looks smoother and better than ever. The Legend of Heroes is a franchise that continues to grow and grow, and as I've been playing through the games, it's been growing on me as one of the fast-rising RPGs that's becoming a star out there. So when it comes to the Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie, after the incredible Legend of Heroes Trails into Zero, I think that this game is going to be a huge hit on the Nintendo Switch and just overall in general, just because of the smooth combat, the great gameplay, the really in-depth mechanics, fantastic graphics, good voice acting. This game has it all and it puts it together with the story that if you take the time to kind of learn everything that's going on is going to be absolutely rewarding to the fans out there. So The Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie is looking absolutely awesome for a July release in 2023. Next up is Pikmin 4 and Pikmin 4 has one of the most interesting development cycles ever. Nintendo was like, hey, it's pretty much done. Everyone's like, cool. I think that was like in the Wii U era or something like that. And then it just went completely radio silent, like literally nothing on the game. Nintendo didn't say a word. Then all of a sudden at a direct, oh, it's back like six years, six, seven years later, which seems to happen to Pikmin all the time. That was development atmosphere with Pikmin 3. That was supposed to be like the DS and like older systems. Then all of a sudden they waited all the way till the Wii U. Then they're like, all right, here it is. They had like skeleton teams on there. Pikmin 4 is like the same thing. They probably had a skeleton team on there for a while. Then they just decided, okay, well, we'll actually do it. And then, eh, well, we need to maybe add a bit more. Eh, the Wii U, we're not going to release it on there. And they just waited. Then all of a sudden they're like, all right, now it's done. <laughs> they just didn't care. And that's how Pikmin is. It's like one of those things, it's like the side stuff. It's like whenever they're done with one other thing, let's just get Pikmin in there. So yeah, I'm happy that Pikmin 4 is happening and it should be good when it drops. Every single Pikmin game is good. So if you're looking forward to some more Pikmin action in 2023, especially since Pikmin 3 Deluxe actually sold really well. I think it's the best selling Pikmin game of all time as a re-release, right? So I think that there's a lot more new fans for Pikmin out there. So I think Pikmin 4 should be pretty solid when it comes out. Next up, Super Bomberman R2 from Konami. It looks like Konami's kind of getting back a little bit into the swing of things here. Got 64 player rumbles in this game. You got a horde base mode, new story with exploration, base building, defense, and strategy. Look, I purchased Super Bomberman R 
on the Nintendo Switch when it first dropped. And I was not necessarily too happy with the game. I mean, the online was really bad. Like it lagged quite a bit. But I'm hoping that Super Bomberman R2 can fix a lot of those issues. And I think the single player is absolutely upgraded here with what they're doing. Some of this stuff, it looks pretty sweet. Looks like they're actually going to make a really good Bomberman game. But they should because Super Bomberman R sold really well. It sold over a million units on the Nintendo Switch by itself. And that's before the Xbox and PlayStation versions and PC and everything else that it came to. So they made plenty of money off this game. And just by looking at it, obviously it's not the biggest of AAA style games or anything like that. So yeah, Super Bomberman R2 should be really good. And I'm hoping that it is going to be good. Next up, Minecraft Legends from Microsoft and Mojang. And this is going to be a very interesting game. It's not like the Minecraft Dungeons game where you're going around with your friends and just beating stuff up, but it's more like you're controlling someone that's controlling their own horde of different things and you're kind of playing as more of an adventure style of game in open-ended areas. So I think it's going to be interesting. Minecraft's not my thing. I've tried to get into it multiple times, but this is a big game because I think it's actually going to be bigger than Minecraft Dungeons when it comes to sales and popularity and what people are looking for because that's what Minecraft is. It's one of those open-ended games where you can kind of go and do anything that you want. I think that Minecraft Legends more kind of like represents what Minecraft is than Minecraft Dungeons did. So we'll see how this one turns out in 2023. Next up, Eden Chronicle, 100 Heroes, 505 Games, Rabbit and Bear Studios, one of the biggest Kickstarters ever. One of the most successful when it comes down to it. People want that old school Sudoken gameplay. And Eden Chronicle brings that back and it brings it back in a hundred times more. Eden Chronicle 100 Heroes looks incredible. But what they've been able to do with the camera angles in combat is just absolutely incredible. And I think it's one of the bright spots or pinnacles of if you want to get your game funded or if you want to release a real good game this is the way you do it via Kickstarter. You do it this way, actually showing off the game, doing it in the right way, building back a franchise that people love and getting something that should be incredible when it drops in 2023. I'm very much looking forward to it. Next up is Marvel's Midnight Suns for the Nintendo Switch, which got delayed out of 2022 into 2023. And people didn't have too high of expectations for this game, but it reviewed incredibly well on the PS5 and Xbox series, becoming a sleeper style hit for many people and i think that it reviewed better than games that were more hyped than it before launch like callisto protocol for example so i feel that marvel's midnight suns can be really good on the nintendo switch because it's not a super heavy you know fast-paced action game where the frame rate and everything is going to be very vital it's a strategy rpg card based right so the XCOM developers for access are the ones that are doing this game and it's really good it's really good it's got a lot of great mechanics to it a lot of great upgrading you can customize your marvel heroes there's a story with it it's a solid game i'm just hoping that the nintendo switch port holds up in 2023 next up is disney illusion island and the reason why i have this on the list is because i'm hoping that if this game somehow does well it will convince Disney to bring back Epic Mickey because that's the game that I think that we all want. So for right now, Mickey and friends are gonna go on this quest. And if you wanna check it out, if you wanna pick it up, you can. Now it reminds me of a Rayman Legends, but just probably not gonna be as good, but it just reminds me of that because you have this local co-op, you have these mystical and whimsical worlds to travel from. And it just gives me that vibe when it comes to the unlocking abilities and what you're going to do and the puzzle solving and platforming. There's boss battles. I think it's going to be a solid game. It's going to be OK. Nothing too crazy, but it's going to be OK. But it's Disney, so people are going to be paying attention. But yes, if this game does OK, maybe Epic Mickey comes back. And that's the game that we should all be excited for if they announce that. Next up is Pepper Grinder from Devolver Digital. And Pepper Grinder just looks like one of those really crazy classic Devolver Digital awesome indie games like it just looks like one of those games it's just fun like you can just throw it on have a little bit of fun go through have this grinder weapon and just be grinding your way through different areas and bodying enemies collecting treasure and just having a ton of fun while you're doing that so that's why pepper grinder is on this list it just looks awesome looks like it's going to be a game that really gives you replay value as well and devolver digital doesn't miss very often so yeah 
this game's on the list. I'm gonna be playing it in 2023. Next up is Front Mission 2 Remake from Forever Entertainment. Listen, Front Mission was a game that I played back in the day and it was great. I love Front Mission. Front Mission 1 on the Nintendo Switch, the remake is solid. Front Mission 2 is gonna be back. You got support for new languages. You got a free camera option now where you can zoom in during gameplay and check out your Wanzers in detail. You've got new coloring and camouflage options, modern in-game effects, renewed soundtrack. I think it's going to be a solid remake, just like Front Mission 1 is pretty good on the Nintendo Switch. So looking forward to that in 2023. Next up is Convergence, a League of Legends story. Now, this is a very interesting game because I never knew about it at all. And essentially what Riot Forge and what Double Stallion Games are trying to do here, they're letting you have control where you can rewind the past, you can control the future, you can explore and traverse through these different spectacular cities as Zahn or Echo. So you have two separate characters here, Young Inventor with an ingenious device to manipulate time and this story-driven action platformer. So it looks really cool. And as I was researching games for this video, it just caught my eye when I saw it. And I'm like, oh, wow, this looks like it could be pretty dope based on what I'm seeing here. I like the art style as well. So look out for Convergence, a League of Legends story sometime in 2023. Next up, Gunbrella. Now with this game, you take the role of a gruff woodsman on a quest for revenge. I mean, when you're gruff, you need to go on quest for revenge. Armed with the mysterious gun umbrella, firearm that doubles as an umbrella, his investigation becomes entangled with the inner workings of ghouls and gangsters. Ghouls and gangsters, the two unlikely but deadliest combinations out there. You also have cops and cultists and the fallout of a corporate exploitation. And Devolver, once again, just makes those sit down, play and shut up type of games, right? Where you just sit down, play, have fun, and tell people about it later down the line because they just always do this and their games sell really well, especially on the Nintendo Switch. So I'm looking forward to Gunbrella. I think that it's going to be a solid action adventure game with a gun and umbrella combined. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. Next up is Fire Emblem Engage. And man, am I looking forward to some classic Fire Emblem action on the Nintendo Switch with a new twist kind of mixed in there as well because Fire Emblem Engage, it combines the best aspects of the original Fire Emblem Awakening when they had the Renaissance, right? This was the last straw, the last line that they had. They really took everything that they knew and loved about Fire Emblem and put it into that game. This game seems to take that style, that attitude, rip it straight out from there from Fire Emblem Awakening, but then add in some flair from other Fire Emblem games that add a whole new layer of coat of paint on top of it to get us the smoothest looking, the best animated, the best graphics Fire Emblem game of all time. And based off of the previews and what we've seen so far, yeah, it's absolutely looking that way. It just animates awesome. They have some really cool quality of life changes that you can already see with the battle information displayed right there when you're on your unit in the overview and then you head right into battle. It's snappy, it's fast, it's smooth. It looks like it's just a step above in every single aspect when it comes to Fire Emblem Three Houses. And they're really just more focusing on your character, on your teammates, and also on the mini games and other things that you can do in Somniel, plus the actual battles themselves with the emblem rings and powering those up. So to me, the focus is great. And I think that this game is going to rock when it comes out in 2023. Next up is Metal Slug Tactics. And this game was delayed. It was supposed to come out in 2022, but ended up getting delayed to 2023, but that's okay because it's still going to be awesome. Dotemu, these guys just make awesome games, publish great stuff. So Metal Slug Tactics looks like it's going to take everything that's great about Metal Slug with the art style, the characters, the weapons, and then mix it with the cool strategy RPG mechanics that so many games have done so great in today's day. Metal Slug Tactics seems to be the next great strategy RPG out there. So I'm really looking forward to this one here. Next up is Sea of Stars from Sabotage Studios. And this one I'm super excited about because it reminds me of the old school RPGs. And I feel that lately we've been getting that quite a bit like we got chained echoes and that game came out of nowhere to be one of the best rpgs and one of the better modern rpgs that i've ever played and i think that sea of stars is next in line for that the chrono trigger comparisons the final fantasy secret of mana style comparisons it's all there i love the story two children of the solace that combine their powers of sun and moon eclipse magic it seems like it's going to be a fast-paced 
fun, really high quality style of RPG that fans of the old school 16-bit era are just going to be able to eat up and not get enough of. So I'm very much looking forward to the game. They're taking the time to really fine tune it and not release it in a bad state. And I think that's awesome because this game is going to be really good and polished. It looks so great from what I've seen. So I think that you guys should absolutely have it on your radar in 2023. Last but definitely not least is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And this game is going to be monumental. I have a feeling, and I know that maybe I'm just saying this, maybe some people don't believe me, but I have a feeling that The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is going to be Nintendo's biggest Legend of Zelda game by a very large margin. And that's saying something because The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has sold nearly 30 million copies. Like it's going on that 30 million range, right? And I think that The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom could surpass that by a good amount. So I feel that what they're doing with this game and the reason why they haven't shown a lot is because they're going to have a blowout and they really want people to be surprised with the scope and scale of this game compared to the Breath of the Wild because Breath of the Wild for all its praise and its game of the years and stuff, there was quite a number of things that people did not like with the dungeons in the game and how they're not very good and the weapon breaking and like the type of game that it is on ground when it comes to a Zelda Ocarina of Time and Up style of game. It was more of a Legend of Zelda original game. If you played the original Legend of Zelda or even A Link to the Past, it's more of that style than it is the 64 Zeldas and Up. So I think that with this game, they're going to try to one up what they've done with anything, especially with Breath of the Wild and have everything that you saw in the original game, but then also have upgraded mechanics over all of that. Then also have a whole sky area and dungeons and have way better combat options and more NPCs and just more things just in general. Heck, we saw a huge flying stone pillar type of deal in there as well. So that right there is already a huge upgrade over anything that we had because all we had was like that parasail thing, right? Which I think we're still going to have stuff like that, but it seems like they're really just upgrading every aspect of what Link's adventure is going to be. And it seems like the story is even going to be more involved and crazier than the original game because you know the lore already goes ham when it comes to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but I think the actual story in game is going to be far more in depth, far more chilling, far more dark, and really just permeate to the rest of the game's quality. So I'm very much looking forward to this game. It's my most anticipated game, and I think that it's going to be game of the year nominee, one of the best games that we've ever played. And I feel that it's just really going to one up the original Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in every single type of way. So looking forward to it obviously quite a bit here all right guys that wraps it up for this video here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell we will see you for the next video peace